we're really very, very blessed and lucky today to have what I consider the, the father of dental implants with us today, Dr. Linda Linkow. We're here at the AAID meeting, the 55th annual meeting, of which Dr. Linkow was a president and founder of this, of this group, and of course, past president, Dr. Ed Mills. And we're in for a real treat because we're going to hear quite a bit about how this all began, the history of it, why you felt that this is something that needed to be done in dentistry. Yes. And uh, we're really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Thank today. you for taking the time out to hear me say something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. have Dr. Mills will be conducting the interview, and uh, I think this will be something that many people want to hear and save for uh, for future uh, to be able to understand where this all started and why we're where we are today because of pioneers such as Dr. Linka. You know, um, Lenny, I, I was um, I was actually talking or interviewing Hilt Tatum, yes. and you know I was acknowledging for his uh, contributions. And one of the first things that he that he said was before I really go on. He goes, really, he couldn't go on without giving you credit as really the father of modern implant dentistry. And for, you know, Hilt Tatum to end up expressing that, you know, I realized how important it was for you to really get your retrospective thoughts of what you went through, not only to, to, to allow us to be where we are, but, you know, what brought you to the position to allow us to be where you are? Well, first of all, I'm very happy that he said what he said because I have a tremendous amount of respect for him like I have Carl Mish too and, but uh, I have to say this that uh, I have to brag just a little bit it's the only thing I'm going to brag because I didn't have a superiority complex in fact I had an inferiority complex all my life my whole life was baseball I was supposed to be a baseball player with the New York Giants in high school they scouted me right out I was a captain of the high school team we won a championship and everything else but I had enlisted in the year call waiting to be called I was 17 at the time and then George Mack came over to me and, and discovered me. He was told about me. He says, how would you like to play with the Giants? He would go down the, the, to, the, uh, to the spring training. I said, I'd love to. I fell through the floor, you know, when he said that. And I expected, and he said, well, how are you fixed for the service? And I thought, well, I said, Christ, I'm going to have to lie for the, really for the first time in my life. I said, I'm 4F. You know what 4F is? Yeah, what's you 4F? You wouldn't know. So you guys <laughs> wouldn't know. It means I wasn't fit physically to go in the Army. I either had flat feet or my eyes didn't work or something. So we said, oh, that's great. We need guys like you. So, <laughs> so uh, I went down there three weeks, and I was doing great down there. And uh, then my mother called me. I had to go, and then I gave him another lie. And I had to go. My boss wanted me back. to where your boss now? And Carl Hoddle told me that. He was a great left-handed pitcher. And he was made the head of all the minor leaguers, the league teams at that time. And I finally went to service, and then they wrote to me about six months later if I wanted to report in uh, in. Uh, in um, uh, where the hell is it on uh, the west coast of uh, Sarasota for spring training but I wanted to get into college I wanted to study phys ed, phys ed but I couldn't get in there then because unless you unless you your father or your brother or your uncle was in the medical school you couldn't because I applied to medical school you, you didn't have a chance to get in so anyway to make a long story short uh, I got into dental school after pre-med and uh, the last two years in dental school you had to have 2,000 clinical points to graduate. This was NYU, 2,000. That was a lot. Most of the students could only get 1,650, and they went two summers to do it. I was playing semi-pro ball in the summers. At the end of my junior year, the junior year, I had more than every single senior. I had 2,700 points. So my senior year, all I had to do was go to two lectures, one 8 o'clock in the morning, one 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and I... Everything else was up to me. So they put me in the, in the Crown of Bridge department. I was doing, the only one doing roundhouse bridges. And then I sat in the postgraduate courses on dentures with patients, dentists were coming in to, and pay to learn about dentures. So I was a cocky kid then. I mean, and I said, this is ridiculous. This is archaic. This is crazy. So the instructor said, Link, how you way out of line? I said, I'm not going to be out of line for long. And then four months after I graduated, I did my first a unilateral sub on the lower uh, right four side. Four months out of dental school? On the same, four months, in 1953, 52. And I did it on a guy by the name of Sam Cohn, I never forgot it, and his wife standing over me like this. It lasted seven years. He developed diabetes later on, and then it failed. But uh, that's how I got in. I started doing that, but I wasn't the first one. Tell, let me ask you this. Yes. Oh, Everybody's got mentors. You're definitely one of my mentors and most of my friends' mentors. Yes, yes. Well, 
Did you have mentors? I mean, who? who At that time, I had absolutely no mentors. What happened was this, and this is the God's honest truth. I was going, I was buddy with one of, one of the guys in the class. Uh, none of us were married at the time, you know, and he had a, he was a rich kid and he, he had a home in uh, uh, an apartment in uh, Sutton Place in New York on the east side. So we was having a party on a Saturday night, okay? So I'm in the elevator coming up and I hear these two guys, I don't know for nothing. He says, Jesus, they opened up the gum and they took an impression of the bone and they were supposed to put something in it to sit on top of it. It clicked like that, just like boom. Right in my head. I who were the guys? Don't even know who the hell they were. All right. I don't know who they were. Okay. So what happened was, uh, immediately I clicked. I knew exactly. You got over enough, take an impression of the bone, and, and design something that's going to fit over, like a saddle. Okay, that was my first sub per you know, sub. Then, that was in 1952. In 1952, the American kind of implant dentures, that was the name. It wasn't dentistry. Dentures, it was called. Yeah. Was forming. And it was Isaiah Liu. It was Gershkoff and Goldberg. It was Roy Bodine and uh, a fellow by the name of Germain and a couple others. And uh, I was a nobody then, but I went down. I hadn't been outside the service when I came back. I wasn't out of Brooklyn my whole life. You're a kid. Yeah. So I went down to Chicago right here near the loop and they had a meeting. And I was like yesterday, I was sitting at this table. They were all talking about it. And it's like I didn't exist. They didn't want to know who the hell I was. So I felt so embarrassed that I just walked away depressed and went back to my hotel room and the next day I left to go home to Brooklyn. Then a couple of years later they 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 asked for people who wanted to join. So I went I went down, it was in Florida. They went down in Florida. And who's sitting right opposite me? I say hello. And he started cutting into me like crazy. Where do you because oh yes, because I wrote a couple of articles. I wrote on the failures of my subperiosial influence. Not that one. Oh, well, this had to be later because those articles came out in 1954 and uh, so it must have been about 55 or 56 when I went down for the second time. And he says, how dare you write an article and not mention my name? I said, I don't know who you are. I was a naive kid. And the more I said that, the more he got crazy. <laughs> he went nuts. So I took a, a, an exam. They had about 200 written questions, 200. And I was, it took me about four hours. I get home, I get a, a letter from Lechler. He was the, he was the uh, secretary of time. Congratulations, you've passed the didactic portion of this, but we can't have you in because you didn't do a full subperiosteal implant. Okay, so I didn't get in. So about five more years I'm working on my own. I'm making a big name for myself. I'm doing many, many subperiosteal implants. So Norman you Crane know? was just made the president. Right. And he calls me up, Lenny, you've got to come down. We need you. We know you're doing this stuff. You're writing on. We need you to come down. I said, okay. 